Good day. This is the Eye of the Storm podcast with the big picture technical update for the U.S. Treasuries market. I'm going to begin on the 30-year bond. And today we're just going to talk about, I'm going to start here on the weekly chart. I'm going to go over the, the larger count that I have uh, in motion uh, currently, and just to kind of count where we are and what actually I believe we will get to over the near term here. I continue to count five waves down off of the all-time bond high, which actually was 192, but the low in yield was at 1.17, which equates to 183.14 in the futures market. So from that level, I started to count five waves down. Within this five waves down, I am still looking for that completion. So I have complete uh, waves one, two, three, and four uh, out of that first five down that I'm looking for. And that is now showing that the market is again likely complete with the fourth wave. And now we're in a fifth wave down and early projections on the weekly chart. So I'm going to bring it down because it's going to be the same on the daily. We can see it. So here we have wave four in all of its glory. And that actually was from the October lows to the April highs. So the bond market topped out prior to equities doing the same. Um, and now by you know, six, uh, excuse me, four months. So in any case, where we have kind of come in now is that I believe that the bond market has done its first wave of minor wave five. So of the fifth wave that's coming down, I'm, I'm labeling it in minor degree. It could be a, it could be intermediate, it could be as high as intermediate. In any case, what I'm looking for is still an additional five waves down. So here's wave one. We remain in the process of wave two. This could also be complete at that high. So we have a lot going on this particular week in terms of economic data and um, other things that, like the Fed meeting, which is economic data. Uh, so just to kind of go over that, what we have starting tomorrow, uh, which will have an effect on our bond market, on the treasuries. At 9.45 in the morning, but at Eastern time, we have the S&P flash, U.S. manufacturing, and U.S. services PMIs. Those come out tomorrow morning. Tuesday at 9 a.m. is the Case-Shiller Home Price Index. Has somewhat of a peak, but not necessarily that much of a ever flow within the market. At 10 a.m. on Tuesday, Eastern, we have consumer confidence. And then, of course, on Wednesday, at uh, 2 p.m. Eastern, we have the FOMC decision and also at uh, 2.30 Eastern uh, Chairman Powell's press conference. That is going to be midweek highlight of the week. Uh, balancing it out, then on Thursday, we have initial jobless claims, durable goods, uh, GDP, uh, it, all kinds of things. Uh, those are all at 8.30 a.m. Eastern. And then at 10 a.m., we have pending home sales. So there's just a great deal that comes out. And then Friday, we, we tap it off with the PCE index. All have been major market movers in the past. And so how they all get reported this week and what it ends up doing to the market can be more reflected in that I'm looking for a third wave down. And all of, here we have, this is the FIBS for minor wave five. Now, minor wave five when compared to minor wave one or wave five compared to wave one. Does it make any difference on the degree? They're both going to measure out the same. So when, when we're putting together our FIB relationships between uh, when we're comparing wave five to wave one in a five wave structure would be the first is that they are equal. They are equal in length. And that would place the 30-year bond down here at 104.11 is where the support on the 100% level or equality comes in. The second most popular or second most frequent is the 618. That wave five would equal 0.618 of wave one. And that comes in at 
uh, 25. That does do the trick, by the way, in, in terms that we're usually looking for a fifth wave to create a new low or high, depending on the direction of the impulse, that the fifth wave will uh, exceed the third wave. And in this case, it does. And so that fits as well. Now, the outside would be that the third most common is going to be that the minor fifth wave or the fifth wave would be 1.618 times the length of the first wave. And in the case of where we are right now in the 30-year bond, that would drop this market to 8526. We have not been at this particular level. And I went out to yield monthly maximum. Uh, the last time we were there on this chart would have been 1997. So, and I and I purposely did a little pause there. We're sitting in 2023, and there's it's out there. It's a number. I'm not saying that's where it's going, but if we were to look at a very long term picture or a big picture, and what we have coming up in terms of just Elliott moves in the other markets, it would not be out of the realm of reality to expect something like this in the bond market. But I'm talking out there, folks. I'm talking out there. 2024, 2025, out there. So there's a lot that's going to happen in between, but that's where those numbers sit on the big picture. So we bring it back down. So if that's what I'm looking for. But so I'm in the first five, completed the first five to put wave one of minor five in. Now we're in wave two. So we got that third wave, bringing it anywhere near here would be great. Then we do another four and a five of minute level to put in that minor fifth. Now, what that completes down below, whether it's going to be an A wave, is it going to be a primary degree wave one? I don't think it's going to be a primary degree wave one, but we need to just go take a look at even longer term data, additional uh, charts that we can go back and look as far as we can. That's going to help to determine that. So right now, though, here we are in today over the next several months as we go now, uh, pushing to the end of the third quarter and then looking into the fourth quarter. So uh, August is just a very short hop. And then we're in August and then we're going to be finishing up the third quarter in September. So, yep, they consider it still in the beginning, but we're rapidly going to move through it. In any case, 30-year bond. Wave two, if it's not complete, we have also the same in terms of retracements for wave two, which happened to come in right here, 128.20 to 129.30. That's if the bond market should suddenly turn and go like, okay, we're not, rates, they're fine. And that would push the rate lower. But we have to leave the room right now, that 128.20 to 129.30, if wave two is not complete. That's going to be made pretty clear, I believe, next week. I don't think it's going to take very long for the market to interpret what they're hearing or seeing in terms of the data and to what the Fed would be expected to do on that Wednesday. But that's where the conversation is going to roll. All right, over in the tenure notes, we're going to move down the cycle. So if we're looking for uh, completion of... If it's not, not of that small wave two, uh, same deal here in the 10 year note, a little bit different look, but same area. So what we have here is we, again, uh, a third wave, fourth wave, I'm, I'm saying they're minor. So minor three, minor four, we're in a minor fifth wave down. The fibs that are latched are attached to this right here. They are for a minor fifth wave. So it's again, the fibs where we associate a fifth wave and compare it to the first wave. In this case, it's minor degree. So the first would be equality. And that's bringing the 10 year now to 107.080. It has potential then, of course, to come down and get the third wave, by the way. So wave two comes in here, third wave can get us down to 101.105. So those are in the realm of reality over the next quarter or a couple of months here. And it's still a lot of work to get it down there. But 
there's I believe there's going to be enough coming to fruition that's going to turn the sentiment and turn the narrative. So we'll get a lot of support for additional downside and all of this. Um, and then I will be going over that in the next um, podcast, which I'll also put out today on gold, silver, and the US dollar. And those three in combination with the bond market, in combination with the economy, et cetera, et cetera, are beginning to to show direction, to to show things being complete in terms of the choppiness, in terms of the sideways moves, in terms of the non-directional type moves. I mean, going against what you may think is going to be happening in one of those products, particularly in the bonds, are interest rates going down or are interest rates going up? I think that conversation is now going to be made clear that the Fed did say that they were going to raise the rate twice, not just once, but twice uh, before the end of the year. And, uh, why and it's been repeated several times so i'm not sure why the conversation would would yield too far away from that but it sometimes just appears that it is in any case we're looking for that wave two and in the 10-year note that does suggest that we should get a continuation now if wave two here wave two minute wave two of minor wave five may not be complete Maybe we got an A and that was the B and we get one more little bounce higher. And in that case, I'm going to bring this down quickly to the one hour chart and, and to look at what it looks like inside. So that's what we're looking at, right? If this is the wave one, was this all ABC and we put a two up here and then this is one, two, and then one, two, three, four, five, mm, could be. If we bring it here and this all ends abc and then we're in a one two three four and we're in a five to kick off three of three then that also could be so we're still kind of out there in the dark because of the nature of the market was left on friday so we yep we can go one more time and and that being the case we go back out here to the four hour chart where i can take a look at this and I'm going to run it right from that high down to that low. And we're going to get the fibs going back up. And they're kind of pretty much, here we have it to the, they're pretty much in those same places. This was downside. And this was upside. So we have that and we had that. And now we have this lower one. So if... If wave two is not over, it has potential to get to 113.150 to 114.085. It has potential. I'm not necessarily going to be looking for that, but these markets have done stranger things. But the bringing it down to the hourly, it's not all super supportive of that being the case. This in its entirety to this level, yep, it could be an ABC, we're done, but that would suggest that we don't drop anymore, that we just turn from here and build and get ourselves above the 15, the 200s, the hourly, 200 SMA, EMA, and the 50 EMA. Those are 50 period. Get above it without looking back and get up to these levels to finish ABC. Otherwise, we do continue to drop. And then in which case, this would be labeled wave two and we're dropping in that third and it should begin to pick up some speed. In all fairness to the market, it's like if it's waffling around, it's, it's, it's burning time. And I'm not sure why that decision, other than if the markets really begin, if the equity markets really do begin to turn and continue to head lower and they get that extra push, you're going to get get that flight to quality type rally that they start throwing the money into treasuries uh, for safekeeping, quote unquote. So again, a lot of that's going to be basing on what's happening in other markets. That's why all three of them are come in together here. All right. So 10-year note, same as the 30, we're looking for either a completion of a small wave two, and then the resumption of a larger minor fifth wave, but in the form right now of a minute third. 
So we're looking for the largest section of this one, three, five, uh, one, two, three, four, five down, the impulse down. That we feel is coming up next, and it'll be to the downside. Now, last up, we're going to look at the five-year note. Always does that. Doesn't like it when I kind of come in too quick. All right. So once again, we've got the same picture in play. If here in the five-year note, <clears throat> let me just start back out at that daily. We'll take a look. We have wave three, wave four. So all this is the other thing that I took a lot of time to match up um, what's going on in rates to how each of the markets actually are moving now in the same pattern. And that fits overall to what's happening in the broader, what, what the broader picture rate interest rates are looking like. And if we're looking that th there's going to be a lot of play as well with the inverted, when, when the yield curve becomes inverted, is that inversion going to get worse or is it going to improve? Or, and then that all kind of goes into how they price these bonds. So bottom line though, in the five-year, I would be looking for continued downside for bond prices, upside for rates. So I've got the ABC, the four, if we're coming off the, and let me just line up one more under that level. And let me open this up. And I uh, was right there. And I'm going to put on there to there to there so what we have are the fibs for the downside and I can clean this up real easy this is bing that high was 11 111090 oh, and I'm going to look at extensions Zero nine zero, and then then they should be equal. Ta -da. One that's all line up so we can see that our six one eight and our fifties and six one eights are not too far from one another. So if we're not done, if we're not done with this wave two, we have to allow for one oh eight one three two up to one oh nine. My thought process is that it is done. So I would then be looking to take out that one, right? So we have 108 to 109 possibility. So you can see that the six, they just reverse. So this becomes on the way up, this 618, it, it, they kind of the numbers reverse themselves a little bit, but I have 108 to 109 on the way up if this was not done. So if this is all A and this is a B, boom. So we've got the same deal going on in the fifth in the five year note as we do in the 10 year note as we do in the 30 year bond. All of the markets reacted. So that's why I'm saying that since they're performing and they're doing in the same patterns, this one's a little bit different on the and it's internal here how it dealt with that mix mash that we did in, in the longer end of the curve. But now it seems to be all back in play together. So I'm going to be looking for this all to turn and to drop. We might get to, it might chop itself around. Again, we have a lot of data on Monday and Tuesday with the Fed on Wednesday. So, and then more data towards the end of the week. So there's a lot of data that's going to come out. And that then would feed into whatever decision gets made on, on Wednesday. And personally, I would be expecting them to hike. Um, but how much? And then moving forward, are we going to get a month uh, off before they uh, hike again? Or are we going to get it done right away and then go into the uh, holidays without any more interest rate threats? That might be part of the narrative. I don't know, but we shall see. In any case, I, I say this as the markets can become squirrely. The clearer picture truly remains in the rates. That's where it's like, 
you know, I'm going to be honest, and it would appear that the big money is going to play. So they're they're going to deal with the rate itself. The internals that go on in the bond is great for day trading or whatever, but tends to not be as clear on the de the defined move that will happen with rates. So there's a lot more volatility in price in the bond than there is in movement in the rates. Okay, that's where I'm going to end this particular uh, podcast. I will be doing one almost back to back. I'll move from here and I'll go over and do the next one, which is going to be on gold, silver, and the U.S. dollar.